All right, so after all this discussion, let's get to it. I want to establish the beginnings and ends of each member. And I could do that by just labeling each of these, like here's end I, end J, end I, end J of member BC. I could also do that by just drawing arrows, saying here, going boom, left to right, left to right. What this arrow tells me is that you know my local coordinate system for each member is essentially going like this. This is how I am establishing my local coordinate system. Now this is important for each element, this local coordinate system, because it's also going to be related to our internal positive sign convention, which says that when I look at the inside of a member and make a cut, my positive internal moments are causing compression at the top, tension at the bottom. Now how do we define the top and bottom? Well, it's going to be from a local coordinate system where we're going to the right and upwards are positive. So this arrow, these I's and J's, you could call this end I, end J, like this, or again, you can use the arrow going like that. This is a positive internal moment. This is a positive internal normal force. And then on the left side of my cuts, this is a positive internal shear. And this is a positive internal shear on the right. So here I've essentially said, this is how I am aligning each member with my positive internal sign convention. Seems like a minor step, but something that's very important and minimizes confusion later on. Now that we've established the beginnings and ends of each member, it's about now drawing the reactions and loadings and making sure that we have it. So it's, I, I like to do both of these kind of things at the same time where I blow up my structure and draw the things. When I look at this structure, I'm going to cut it right here and cut it right here just before the connection and just after the connection so that my drawing will now look like this. So here's my blown up drawing. I want to make sure I include the loading and instead of drawing A or something, I'm just going to draw the, the reactions with their magnitudes and orientations. Now I'm just going to include the, what I establish as the left and the right or the beginning and the end of each member. And for me, I'm going to tell you right now, all I got to know is this stuff right here, the reactions or internal loading at the left side of the member. And I can draw the shear moment diagram the rest of the way as long as I know what the loading is. I don't need to figure out what's going on on the inside here. Here, because I said I'm going left to right, it's going to help me if I can determine what my internal loading is right here at the cut in front of, uh, of member BC. All right, so I want to determine the internal loading right here. So to determine the internal loading on the left side of member BC, I can use equilibrium equations to just straight up solve for the moment shear and axial forces here. But before I get into that, let me hold off a little bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw the axial shear and moment diagrams for member AB. I would draw vertical lines here. So here, axial force diagram. N in kilonewtons is going to be zero because I have no axial force being entered to the member. So that's zero on this end. I've got no loading that changes my axial loading going across the beam. So that's zero. And so really, I just have it's just a line on zero. But my shear diagram here, my shear in kilonewtons, starting at this point, I go up 8.785 kilonewtons. Or this is this reaction here causes a positive internal shear. I have no loading here, which means that I. I have a constant shear and so bam that's just going to be a line that goes straight across to 8.785 that is supposed to be a straight line then my moment diagram this moment diagram which is should be in units of kilonewton meters starts at zero because I have no moment here on the left end and because my shear is constant and positive I have a linear moment diagram that's going to be increasing linearly because I have a positive shear value that means my slope is this way and now I'm gonna go increase linearly bam like this and this value here is my change in moment from zero which is the same as the area under the shear diagram and this purple area right here it's a rectangle so that's just 8.785 kilonewtons times the length of this member AB which is 4 meters and that's gonna tell me that that change is 35.14 kilonewton meters 
this value right here is a positive 35.14 kilonewton meters. And that's my normal shear and moment diagram for member AB. I can use this drawing to say what the shear is here. So I have a positive internal shear at the cut right in front of joint B. A positive internal shear where I make a cut and I look on the left side is downwards 8.785 kilonewtons. And then this positive moment causes compression at the top, which would suggest that here I have 35.14 kilonewton meters. And forgive me, I am foregoing the units on this. I'm going to assume that you can associate the arrows, like a curvy arrow as a moment, with the units of kilonewton meter, and then the straight arrows with units of force. So now I'm ready to draw the moment diagram for member BC. Well, kind of, right? I still need to determine this MVN on the left side of the beam so I can go left to right and draw my shear, moment, and axial force diagrams. And so I can use one of two things. I can use equilibrium of member BC to find this internal loading on the left side. Or I can use equilibrium of my joint at point B here. And here I know from equal and opposite that this is 35.14. I have a shear going upward, so this is 8.785. And then I can also draw on the right side of joint B, I'm going to have a moment, a shear, and a normal. This is this N, V, and M. Oh, I drew this wrong. Ooh, good thing I checked. Ha ha ha. This is a cut on the right side. So that po that shear internally, if I if it's internally positive, I should have drawn that upwards right there. Now I can use equilibrium of this joint to calculate NVM, or I can use equilibrium of the member BC. But I know from here, some some of the moments about point B it has to equal zero. This moment is also going to be 35.14. So I know that this moment here is 35.14. The shear, huh, that shear here, I can go through all the angles. I know that the horizontal component here is going to be equal and opposite of the horizontal component of this 8.785, which should be the same as 4.393. So this is 4.393. And you know what? This direction is going to be the other way. This is going to be 4.393 going that way. And then in terms of shear, I could do again the shear component and it's going to be pointing upwards. And some of the forces in the vertical will tell me that this is 7.608 kilonewtons going upwards. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Again, you can verify these numbers just by doing equilibrium of member BC or again equilibrium of joint B. Let's finally draw these axial shear and moment diagrams. So again, I'm going to draw my vertical lines to help me draw the diagram. My axial force diagram, this 4.393 is causing compression on this face. So I'm going to start at negative 4.393 because according to my internal positive sign convention, compression is negative and therefore I would have here negative 4.393 right? and then because I have no axial loading in between I'm just going to do a line straight across and it ends at negative 4.393 kilonewtons which matches here you know this 4.393 is causing compression right here at that face then I go to my shear diagram I go up because this shear on the left side is causing a positive internal shear or I can just follow the arrow it says go up so I go up 7.608 kilonewtons and because I have a uniformly distributed load here this is a constant that would mean my shear is going to be linear and my moment diagram is going to be parabolic or x squared here I would go I'm going to decrease linearly from 7.608 kilonewtons to whatever the area is right here under my distributed load and this area is 3 kilonewton per meter times 8, which was 24 kilonewtons. And that means I'm going to decrease 24 kilonewtons down to negative 16.392, if you do the math. Bam. I need to know where is this zero happening. And it's important because that's going to be where my max moment occurs. And so I can do 7.608 kilonewtons divided by 3 kilonewtons per meter. And that will give you 2.536 
meters. So now we can draw our moment diagram which again we know is parabolic and we start here this is a positive internal moment this 35.14 causing compression at the top or again the way I like to do it just saying the arrow is pointing upward so go up and so I go up 35.14 kilonewton meters I start here and then I'm increasing my slope is positive because my value of the shear is positive and the amount I'm increasing is this area here and this area right here is just that area which is one half base times the height and that is going to be equal to 9.65 kilonewton meters which means that is how much I increase from 35.14 and that will take me to 44.79 kilonewton meters. The value of my shear is zero, so the slope here is like this. It's going to be horizontal. So my moment diagram kind of goes like that. Then I decrease this area, which you're going to find is 44.79. I know it's zero because I don't have a moment here at this end, at point C. And therefore, my moment diagram is going to go boom to zero. And that is my axial shear and moment diagram for member BC.